Australia's largest city is home to the country's sickest urban river. It makes sense why it's so sick. An overwhelmed watershed unable to cope with so many humans. What was once a place of dirt and rocks and vegetation is now one of impenetrable surfaces, feeding a highway of pipes and drains. Filthy backwaters fascinate me. So with my little red kayak and a set of wheels, I'm going to see for myself what makes a bad river bad. I smell disgusting right now. And for a man who doesn't shower much, that says a lot, you know? Yeah, it'll be dirty. And I might question the idea more than once. It's it f***ing reeks. Or fancy playing golf instead. But you know what? That's the plan. Trust the instinct to see every inch of the sickest urban river in Australia. Am I becoming an arsehole? I think I might have become an arsehole. Now, I have no idea where I am. I'm on a cricket pitch. The crew's dumped me here in a suburb I have no idea, in a city I don't know very well. And I've now got to find the river. I feel genuinely excited to go and search this thing out. I don't know where it runs. I know it's roughly about 20 kilometres in length. I might find body parts of dogs and cats and humans and I might be up to my knees in effluent at one stage. Who, who knows? I'll be in the shit of humanity. And so there bloody better be some nice moments. So that's it. I'm going to go and find the cooks and paddle down it and make observations and try and be um, optimistic about life. <laughs> be a bit fun. I'm going to follow my nose. I've done it before on train lines and rivers. Follow the low ground, follow where the water goes. First sign of a drain. I've got 13 chaff bags from very expensive horse muesli that I'm going to fill with rubbish of some description. We might find some cash, just some cold hard cash. This could be Cook's River. Far out. It seems to be a something. Go on, little trolley. All right. Can't really paddle this. There's the first confluence. It's nice to see. The water doubles in size. A few years ago, in the name of backyard adventuring, I paddled to work via my boyhood river. A river I always thought was pretty healthy. For four days, I busted my ass, getting nullified and grumpy. What in the heck are you sitting out there for, mate? Yet it was still a bloody great adventure. This might very well be the world's best donut van. But I was wrong. The little river right under my nose was sick. I was inspired to see other bad rivers. Ancient catchments with a modern story to tell. Paths of least resistance that have changed rapidly at the hand of humans. Backwaters and drains, for example, places that few of us see, are super interesting. Oh, I feel the burn on the thighs. Oh, yeah. I'm convinced such places are fascinating to most. But given they often stink and they're wet and hard to reach, it's easier to go places that smell nice and have good parking. That is some slippery stuff. I was going to say slippery shit, but it probably is slippery shit. A long tunnel this. This is the Cooks River, eh? Hey? Well, fool me. Deep under something now. Big roadway, car park, something over there.
Oh, that's a uh, charging along a little bit of water. Not deep. And we have some river rocks they've used. Classy, San Diego. This reminds me of my childhood going through Melbourne drains. And look at that. It's two bucks. Making bacon. It's gold too. It's actually gold, like people would be looking for gold in a river. What a modern version of it. Nice split pin. Peg. Jeez, I could be here all day. That two dollars has got me keen. Bloody river full of two dollar coins would be all right. It's actually really clear water. I'm amazed. Smells bad. Smells very bad. So it's the mud that's reeking to high heaven. I feel like I'm just standing in raw sewage, so I'm just gonna keep trucking. Evils with plastic bags. Number plate. Face masks. They've regenerated the banks of this thing, which is really good. And a duck just flew off, good on your duck. What do they say about putting a wet hand into a glove? It's freaking hard. Where I come from in Victoria, our government doesn't have a redemption scheme for bottles and cans. They do up here. Which for someone like me who loves finding stuff, dude, it's extra exciting. Cool. A fragment of a builder's pencil. And there's fish. Oh, an eel. Good on your eel. Nice to see you, brother. Now, the crazy thing about that last couple of k's is that you're going through this huge industrial estate and people are none the wiser that there's a human under them. Something kind of pretty about this, you know, there's all this moss and, and the cracks in the concrete. All this stuff grows through. There's some cicadas. Nature just finds a way, it breaks through, right? Nerf guns, earbuds, sponges, fragrance. Spray cans, drinking bottles, coffee cups, styrofoam, Venetian blinds. Super Bowl. I like Super Bowls. Feeling feral is perhaps the most liberating space a human can dwell. I can't really get through that. No longer appealing to anyone other than yourself. You're disgusting. Moving to keep warm, wondering where to step next, having long forgotten to look at the time or drink and eat, you're immersed and all you give a damn about is getting downstream and seeing what lies ahead. Truth is, as disgusting as this river is, and I am, I love it. I'm going under the train line, or one of the train line bits now. It was intense. It looks like much the same on the other side, just full on jungle. There's something so urban, it just feels really wild. Other than the plastics, to give it away. There's all these thunderous train goings on. This is a very eerie experience, I'm not going to lie, this is eerie. Oh my golly.
Stay up, stay up. Where's the bottom? Where's the bottom? My little daughter has these exact textures. I don't know where to start. How many sport teams can we field? It's so bloody bad, it's, it's interesting. Every student of Sydney should see this. A bit further back, I was in a wild place. And then you come around the corner and then wham, you hit with this big bloody barge of sadness. This is why it's a bad river. This is why it's shit and it's love, right? I feel like I'm covered in, in filth. It's starting to itch around my waist. Polystyrene, it's in my undies. It's disgusting. It's bloody disgusting. Not a lot, lot, lot of love in Bow right now. I'm sort of just thinking this is a bit shit. <laughs> but, oh well, no, there's a laugh, that's good. It's been good to stay on the line of what, what, what is an ancient river and there's it just nothing about it feels ancient. Then you pop out on a golf course. Hi chaps. I just watched the golfer do a hopeless shot. By himself, I wonder if he's going to cheat. I don't suppose it really matters to cheat while you're by yourself because you're not trying to beat anyone anyway. There you go, make someone's day. Sydney is without doubt a remarkable piece of real estate. Famous harbour, opera house and bridge all in one spot. But such a view doesn't expose the cross-sectional life of the city. And perhaps the greatest insight of all, where sickness resides. A drain that was once a river does. A watershed representing the lives of almost 600,000 people. That's made my day so far, that turtle. What a little survivor. Zero vegetation. I mean, what's it eat? Right. Confluence of rivers. Jesus Christ, if that's the modern day confluence of rivers, holy shit. There's a bike. Relatively void of rubbish, this thing, because it's so slick. Just pumps it all out to sea. Very efficient. For the first time today, I sit down and indulge in a daydream. I think of myself as a lowly ranked, handsome, incompetent sailor in search of somewhere to dip his cap to drink. Current day Bow can no longer do what Seaman Miles is about to do. Head up the river until he feels a blending of the salty and the fresh, and drink water that doesn't make him sick. I've been practicing my whole life for this. 
moment. Been rowing a long time. Had a malfunction, had a malfunction. Oh, there we go, it's a couple of good ones. Oh! Got a bow wave! <laughs> yes! Yes! That is good water! And we have our moment, where fresh water becomes a reason to make camp, which becomes a settlement, then a village, and finally a city. And that's where we find ourselves, with a problem hundreds of years in the making. Oh, this feels good. I'll be damned. Which, does this mean this is estuarine? I don't dare take a sip. This river's concrete banks were put in from the 1930s under the Cooks River Improvement Act, which aimed to tidy up an undisciplined stream within neat cement boundaries. But the good news is that other concrete drains in Australia are being converted to some kind of river again. So there's hope. And while I don't live here, I've lived in other cities and gone about my day in much the same way as Sydney siders. Eating and drinking, consuming stuff, one use plastics of convenience. And I'll be honest, when I experience places like this, I see myself in the demise. Pissing down rain. Wind is beating any kind of tide. I'm officially going backwards. Everything that ran off from the new colony. Effluent, fat, oils, dyes, chemicals, it all went in the river. And in truth, a lot of it's probably still there. They say the silty beds of this river is still what makes it so sick. Things are only different if you take a moment to think what was here before this. I've got a plastic version of this thing now and it's kicking my ass. <laughs> oh, the back, they're not made to paddle any great distance. Oh, maybe I'd just bloody do this for a second. Stretch out. Oh. By the time this river becomes paddleable, it actually looks healthy enough, or at least not sick. If I hadn't experienced the first half of Cook's River, I'd be entirely reliant on what others say about its health. And that's a problem, because the way I see it, Cook's River sickness is either behind locked gates, invisible in the places we can see it, or entirely up to what we do or don't read. And even for me, who gives a damn about this stuff, it's all too easy to turn the page and read something else. Is that bloke exercising his horse while riding a bike? That is excellent. Ah, now here's, that's nice. Couple of big fat pelicans. Their beak can hold more than its belly can. Good joke, Bodie. I think there's probably only a few kilometres to the mouth, the fake mouth of the river that was diverted when the airport was put in. I can smell the coast and it's pleasant. 
10 hours, full tilt, getting down Cook's River. First finding it, swearing at it, having a few little breakthroughs with some healthy animals, but for the most part thinking, bloody hell, this is genuinely the sick river that Google told me about. That was a great day, very insightful. And I've got bloody plastic baubles in my undies. That doesn't impress me much. I'm in Botany Bay. I'll be buggered. And what a strange thing to think that it felt like I was doing something illegal by coming in and doing this. Get across a train line and park in a weird spot in the back of a golf course. To come in and find these little secretive spots. Almost as if no one wants you to see them. I still use too many plastics. And that's a wrap. We've got one, two, three, four, five, half a dozen bags. That's all I got. It's all the car can fit. I recently watched Bill Murray at Sydney's Opera House, singing and storytelling and being obnoxious. I sat in my seat afterwards, genuinely inspired. But this spot, representing Cook's River to me, likely has more impact as if unpleasant experiences are the best kind because they genuinely soak in. Everything's a bit sticky around these places. I kind of like it. I remember doing this as a kid. And then they took redeemables away. They do it up here. They're far more advanced, the Sydney Siders. Kramer, remember Kramer tried to take Newman's van into state to make money out of redeemables? I might have to do that. 